segundo aquí. Muy bien, buenos días, buenas tardes, eh, bienvenidos a esta sesión informativa sobre la convocatoria para fondos de investigación del Foro Belmont, enfocada en los abordajes integrados en migración, movilidad humana en una era de rápido cambio global. Yo soy Irene Torres, asesora en ciencia y política del Instituto Interamericano para la Investigación del Cambio Global. Brevemente voy a dar un contexto de por qué el IAI ha, se ha unido a esta convocatoria con un anexo de financiamiento para ciertos países de América Latina. El IAI apoya la ciencia que mejora la capacidad de las Américas para enfrentar y prosperar bajo el cambio ambiental global. Quiere lograr un impacto positivo en la sostenibilidad de la región en relación con la adaptación y mitigación del cambio climático, la mejora de la salud humana y el bienestar, la conservación y restauración de la biodiversidad y los ecosistemas. El plan estratégico del IAI se centra en las dimensiones humanas del cambio ambiental global, el cambio climático, la variabilidad del clima, los ecosistemas, el uso del suelo y los recursos hídricos. La movilidad humana y la migración son temas importantes en América Latina y el Caribe. Siguen tres patrones principales. Hacia el norte, a través de América Central y México, a los Estados Unidos. Regionalmente, a través del cual 6 millones de personas han emigrado de Venezuela en los últimos tiempos, especialmente a partir del 2017. E interno. Los eventos climáticos repentinos impactan directa e indirectamente la migración en la región. Los huracanes desencadenan la movilización y migración de millones de personas en las Américas. El huracán Irma, por ejemplo, fue el mayor evento de desastre a nivel mundial en 2017. Desplazó a más de 2 millones de personas en América del Norte y el Caribe y causó daños catastróficos en la infraestructura en varias islas caribeñas. Después del huracán Laura, más de un millón de personas se desplazaron en la República Dominicana, Haití, Cuba, los Estados Unidos y al menos un millón y medio se desplazaron en Honduras, Guatemala y Nicaragua después de que los huracanes Eta e Iota afectaran a los medios de vida y la seguridad alimentaria. Centroamérica también sufre inundaciones, tormentas, deslizamiento de tierra, derrumbes, mientras que las zonas áridas están afectadas por las sequías, todo lo cual trae pobreza, trae seguridad alimentaria, que son también motores de la movilidad. Las catástrofes, como ustedes saben, son importantes impulsoras del desplazamiento interno en Sudamérica, las lentas y las rápidas, como inundaciones, deslizamientos de tierras, sequías. Según la Organización Internacional para las Migraciones, solo en el 2020, la temporada de lluvias extremas en Brasil provocó el 75%, tres cuartas partes de los 358 mil desplazamientos por desastres del país. A esto hay que añadir que la mayoría de los venezolanos desplazados se encuentran todavía en Sudamérica. Las regiones tropicales y subtropicales van a ser testigos de nuevos incentivos climáticos para emigrar en América Latina y el Caribe. Un estudio reciente realizado en la región estimó el impacto del aumento de las temperaturas en el riesgo de mortalidad y predijo que este aumentará con los eventos de calor. Las causas de la migración de las comunidades indígenas que son desplazadas tanto internamente como internacionalmente en América Latina, permanecen todavía inexploradas porque pertenecen a condiciones y factores culturales, sociales y económicos específicos del país de origen. Los grupos indígenas viven en tierras sometidas a la presión de la industria, los promotores y la urbanización. Al menos 50% de la población indígena en 2010 en esta región había migrado a zonas urbanas, lo cual los vuelve especialmente vulnerables a la discriminación y la marginación. Con esta convocatoria del Foro Vermont anticipamos que los equipos de América Latina y el Caribe coproducirán conocimiento científico crítico en la, en la, sobre la interacción entre la migración y los procesos de cambio ambiental global y soluciones para abordar estos desafíos. Y esperamos que los resultados de esta investigación informe la creación de políticas e intervenciones en América Latina y en entornos similares a nivel mundial. Voy a compartir, tenemos ya 53 participantes, voy a compartir brevemente una breve encuesta de Slido a la cual pueden unirse según las instrucciones en la pantalla para conocer quienes nos acompañan el día de hoy. Solo tienen que entrar a slido.com y ingresar ese número 
de eh, encuesta. Si pueden ir llenando, por favor, en slido.com, no en el chat de, de Zoom, sus respuestas para conocer quiénes nos acompañan el día de hoy. Gracias. Si siguen entrando a slido.com con ese código pueden compartir quienes nos acompañan el día de hoy. Buenísimo, tenemos un grupo muy nutrido. Vamos a dejar la encuesta de Slido prendida para que la sigan llenando y podemos ver los resultados al final, pero tenemos varios países representados, nos da mucha, mucha alegría. Y la siguiente pregunta, ah, gente que ya ha estado respondiendo a la siguiente pregunta, muy bien, muchas gracias. Estos son los temas más importantes de interés en este momento de nuestro grupo. Perfecto. Ah, buenísimo. Vemos un grupo que ya sabe cuál es el interés que tiene en migración, movilidad a la intersección, en la intersección con el cambio global. Interesantísimo. Muchísimas gracias. Han respondido ya todos. Voy a dejar de compartir. Y voy a dar paso en este momento. Un momento. Okay. Ah, hello everybody. Uh, Irene, I think uh, uh, you want me to take over from here. Is that right? <laughs> Exacto. Gracias, Excellent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Amanda if she can um, also share her screen because I will inevitably make a mistake and then you will see the wrong things. So uh, Amanda is going to, has, has not only going to help me present this part, but she's also going to make sure that I don't screw up any of the tech, <laughs> which is good. Um, so how, hello everybody and uh, welcome to the webinar. I'm so happy to see so many people here. Uh, just a reminder that if you are not understanding what I'm saying, you should go to the interpretation button and pick the, your language of choice. And I promise I will try to speak slowly in English for our interpreters uh, because I speak too fast. Um, so uh, hello everybody, my name is Nicole Arbor. I am the executive director of the Belmont Forum. And I'm just gonna take you through very quickly uh, some of the background on the Belmont Forum. And then I'm going to ask Amanda, who has been pivotal in, in getting this call together to help me walk through, uh, well, so she can walk through a bit of the background on the call. So Amanda, you can actually skip straight to the next one. Um, so for anyone who isn't very familiar with the Belmont Forum, the Belmont Forum supports international transdisciplinary research um, towards understanding, mitigating, and adapting global environmental change. I'm not going to read all of the different bullet points on the slide, but basically we're looking at systemic um, and targeted integrations and observations, strategic, geographic, gender balanced, um, uh, projects, uh, a greater voice for research or users in informing the research priorities, um, transdisciplinary approaches that involve everybody. So you, I won't, like I said, I won't read all of these because there's, there's lots of different pieces to what we're looking for when we're creating one of these projects. But really the important part here is that we're looking for societally relevant research and research that brings together all of the stakeholders, the researchers in natural sciences and social sciences, and um, the more broad stakeholder community, including policymakers, 
including community members um, and, and, and other major actors. And from here, Amanda, next. To give you a very quick overview of the Belmont Forum structure. So Belmont Forum has members. As we have our co-chairs, we have our steering committee. So IAI, who is the host institution for the Belmont Forum and our host for this webinar, um, is one of our members. And um, while the structure, of course, and governance is very important to me, I suspect it's less important to you. The most important part for you, though, is at the bottom left-hand corner, or really that bottom line. And this is where we're building consortium and really thinking about how do you bring those projects together, where individual puzzle pieces are individual sort of research groups that are trying to come together to build an international and transdisciplinary project. Next slide, please. So the Belmont Forum has done 19 of these collaborative research actions, as we call them. At this moment, there are two of them open. We're talking about migration, but there's also another open call. Uh, actually, it just closed on systems of sustainable consumption and production. So it just closed today, actually. Uh, and so there's a good, there's a, a, a long history of bringing groups together across um, both thematic areas, bringing together stakeholders, and bringing together the global research community. Next slide, please. Um, and this is just to remind everybody that uh, if you want more information about this call or other calls for the Belmont Forum, uh, you can register for Belmont Forum Communications. And certainly, if you're going to be engaging with us and following us and, and tweeting with us or any of these other mechanisms, please use uh, Migration2022 as a hashtag so that we can then capture the conversations in the future. Um, I love the idea of being able to create stories out of these discussions. Next slide, please. So from here, I'm going to hand it to Amanda, who's going to talk to you a little bit more about the migration call itself. And, and yeah, so off you go, Amanda. Thanks so much, Nicole. So um, as Nicole was saying, you know, we're here presenting on this um, call that has been a really exciting um, way for us all to come together um, as the funder side. And this is a pivotal piece for us because we are so excited to see what interesting proposals we can um, gather from you all. And so um, I'm going to share with you the timeline now. The call um, opened on April 11th. And we have been holding ever since then a variety of networking and different workshops <clears throat> um, held in, in part by the Global Development Network, who's here today. And um, of course, I, IAI, who's here, Future Earth. And, um, and we recently just had an annex workshop. And so we're going to share some of that information with you. But we also wanted to let you know that if you weren't able to attend that annex workshop, it was really useful. Every funder on the call went through the details of their eligibility. And that is on the migration hub, it, as well as on YouTube. And so we really encourage you to continue to attending these events. Uh, the call for proposals is going to close Friday, July 29th, 2022 at 20, uh, 2000 UTC. And then awards will tentatively be made about the end of 2022 or early 23, depending on the funding agency, which is being requested from. Usually in a consortium, um, there can be a different, uh, a staggered um, approach for the funding, depending on which funder you're requesting from. So now let's take a little bit about some of the key Belmont form requirements that need to be accounted for to have a successful proposal with us. So the first is that collaborators from at least three different countries need to be requesting from at least three different funding agencies. And I'm going to show you a minute in a minute what that looks like <clears throat> in actuality. Uh, we have 13 funders taking, funding agencies taking, um, participating in this call, and that covers a whole slew of different countries. And um, so by this nature of having at least three collaborators requesting from at least three funding agencies, you can imagine these groups or consortium that are put together can look, you know, quite different from one another. 
these projects, if uh, a prime goal is for them to be transdisciplinary, which for us means including natural and social scientists and stakeholders. And, and stakeholder is very broad here. You know, we're talking government, NGOs, the community, the whole gamut. We're looking for projects that have meaningful co-production. Um, there's a lot of different words for this, um, but you can think of participatory to approaches, co-development, working with the community and working with stakeholders so that their needs, their um, critical views are accounted for in the project from beginning to end. And um, lastly, researchers from countries that are not listed um, in an annex, they can still participate, but they would have to bring their own funds or resources to that consortium. So for that, us, what we call that is um, a self-funded researcher. So if you took, we, um, this call actually has a really wide breadth of um, countries that are participating, but if you don't see um, yours in there, you can still participate if you um, can come in self-funded. Okay, now let's take a look at a few different versions of what a consortium could look like. This, what you see here is sort of the bare minimum consortium to meet our requirements. So you can look first at this top triangle. So this is CRA, that's Collaborative Research Action, and that's the migration call that we're talking about today. And so the consortium needs to have a consortium lead. And um, let's say that consortium lead is from country A. And we look in the list of annexes and funder A is funding that country. So um, if they meet all the eligibility requirements for that country's funding, that um, agency's funding, then this would be an eligible, one eligible person. Now let's look at this additional person who let's say um, the consortium lead would like to bring into the group. So um, partner PI number two, and let's say that person is in country B. They look through the list of annexes and see that um, there is an annex that supports that country, but not with funding, just with in-kind support. And um, that could look like a variety of things. It just depends on what that an agency is able to provide in support to a person. So, but that would still count as um, an additional eligible person if they were able to request um, off their annex for in-kind support. And now let's say we're bringing in our third partner. This is partner PI number three, and they're in country C. So they look through the list of annexes and they see that um, there is an annex supporting um, country C and they're providing funding support. And this funding um, in let's say partner PI three is eligible according to their um, according to this annex. And so they can come in all together as a consortium and this would meet our bare minimum requirements. So there's three partners who are requesting from three different funding agencies. Let's look at what is kind of a little more typical is somewhat of a more complicated system where you have additional partner PIs who are bringing being brought in. And um, typically this is a good thing to do. You know, we're looking for international collaborations and so, and we're looking for transdisciplinarity. So of course, not everyone has the same um, background and discipline. So you wanna bring in these different pieces of knowledge, these different expertise in order to solve these grand challenges like we're talking about today. So, um, in this example here, this consortium, it's a similar story into, as the last example. So we have this consortium lead here who's eligible for funder A. This next partner who's requesting in kind from a different, fund, a different agency. Another partner here who's requesting funding <clears throat> from a different annex. 
And then, but let's take a look at this person. So they wanted to bring an additional person in. They've met the bare minimum requirements by having this first, second, and third person. But let's say they wanna bring another person in, and this is partner PI number four. Let's say they're in country D, but they do not see an annex in order to support that country. They can still participate, as I was saying earlier, but they would have to be here as self-funded. And um, in that case, this does not add to the number, it doesn't meet the three, it doesn't add to the eligible, um, God, help me out here, how am I trying to explain this? Excuse me, <laughs> it doesn't, so the three minimum that we have, it wouldn't add a fourth minimum, if that makes sense. They're participating, self-funding, they're not requesting off an annex, there we go. Okay, and then let's look here. Um, another example is that, um, let's say they want this person to participate, but they look at the annex, they see an annex um, and their country is listed, but then they look at the particulars of the annex and they see, oh, I I'm actually not eligible for this funding. And so if they wanted to participate, they could, but this is still um, would be considered self-funded. So um, in, in all of this to say is that each one of these individuals have some different requirements that they need to make in order to be eligible. And this can vary from person to person in a consortium. So what's really important is that there is the um, group of program coordinators. That's the representative for each funding agency that would be listed on the annex in order and um, their contact information is there. It's great for you to get in touch with these people. Some of them are here today, very easy, approachable people to get in touch with. And um, so if you have any questions about your eligibility, you should definitely get in touch with them. Okay, um, I'm gonna speed up a little bit, but here are some of the important things to look for in your annex. Um, that you're interested in pursuing, uh, which countries are supported? Are you in that country? The type of participant eligible for each annex. So in some cases, you know, it's, it'll say natural scientists or, or, um, or they can fund stakeholders. So um, you wanna make sure that you're meeting those requirements. You wanna look to see, are they providing funding or in-kind contributions? Um, for this call, it's there is all funding. IAI is also does have the option of providing in kind um, in kind support as well, and I'm, they'll be talking about that later. You look for the maximum funding that can be requested, and you're going to want to see if there if there's um, like for, let's. Ex I'll give an example here. Let's say that I want to request, um, there's two partner PIs and we both want to request off of Future Earths Annex. Is there a limit to, in your consortium, how much funding can be requested? And so would, would me and my partner PI maybe need to split that in order to meet that eligibility requirement? You wanna look for the duration of each annex. In general, it's about three years, but some vary. Some say three to four, some have no cost extensions. You wanna look for where you're going to submit the proposal. So the proposal will be submitted by the consortium lead in BFGO. That's our grant management system. But you need to pay close attention in annexes because some funding agencies will want you to submit to their own grant management system in addition. And that could be like a, a few days after um, the migration call closes or not. So these are things you need to look for. You want to look for if there's any stipulations on the number of researchers in a consortium. Sometimes they, they, they have a number that they're requesting. You want to look for currency. So a lot of times these annexes will say um, in their own currency of, from across the world. But in your um, proposal, you'll need to submit in euros. That's very important. Submit in euros. Okay, I think that's where I'm leaving off. Just to say, um, lastly, that we are very excited that um, 
such a wonderful group of funding agencies have come in together to support nearly the globe um, on such an important topic as this. And so I want to thank them all for being here today and for um, for IAI for providing these translation services. We're really excited for this. So, so thank you so much. Thanks, Amanda, and thanks, Nicole, for that welcome and the overview of the process and this specific CRA. I'm going to share my screen and give just a quick overview of the IAI CRA. Les voy a presentar una breve resumen de, del anexo del IAI en este, en este CRA específicamente. Eh, van a ver en el chat el link para este, este anexo del IAI que pueden revisar con más detalle. Aquí estoy, voy a resaltar algunos eh, partes específicos, pero hay más información en el documento. Y también pueden comunicarse directamente con nosotros con cualquier pregunta. Bueno, nosotros esperamos poder apoyar cinco a siete diferentes grupos, consorcios que incluyen eh, equipos de Latinoamérica y el Caribe. De, el periodo sería tres años con la posibilidad de extender un año adicional sin costos adicionales y esperamos arrancar el financiamiento en enero de 2023. En este caso queremos fomentar la participación de múltiples países eh, que son miembros del IAI. Eh, en la siguiente lámina les voy a mostrar los países que, son, que pueden recibir financiamiento. Si ingresa eh, investigadores de un país de ese list de este grupo, pueden eh, pedir hasta 50 mil dólares. Si en, ingresan dos países, pueden pedir hasta 100 mil. Y si ingresan tres o más, pueden pedir hasta 150 mil dólares. Adicionalmente, tienen que juntarse en el consorcio con dos otros financiadores del Belmont Forum. Por ejemplo, los que están presentes en esta llamada puede ser Future Earth y FAPESPE, eh, por ejemplo, o Future Earth y RDI. Por eso es una gran oportunidad que estamos aquí todos juntos. Bueno, los fondos del IAI se puede utilizar para los costos de la investigación, manejo de datos, viajes eh, y varios costos, incluyendo la participación de, de los stakeholders o actores sociales, eh, tomadores de decisión. Normalmente no financiamos el salario de los investigadores. Hay más información sobre lo que se puede financiar y no en el anexo. Los países que pueden recibir fondos en esta convocatoria están aquí en este list. Y las instituciones también, que incluye universidades, eh, sociedades profesionales, ONGs o institutos gubernamentales que tienen programas de investigación. Y una persona puede ser nombrada como eh, el PI, el investigador principal, o el co-investigador principal en una propuesta. Y también en otra propuesta puede ser nombrado como un investigador senior. Hemos puesto muchísima énfasis en nuestra política de equidad, diversidad e inclusión. Es una nueva política que el IAI va a presentar a pedido de nuestros países miembros en nuestra COP eh, el próximo mes. Entonces nosotros eh, es, estamos eh, fomentando la participación de individuos que son miembros de grupos que históricamente han sido subrepresentados y siguen siendo subrepresentados en las ciencias. Y en el anexo pueden revisar eh, esta definición pero no estamos limitados solo a los grupos que están ahí. Entonces, eh, también eh, esperamos que haya liderazgo de investigadores eh, que están en su, la ed etapa temprana o mediana de su carrera para dar más oportunidades de eh, investigadores tempranos, digamos, en su carrera en, en la región. Y también hemos puesto mayor énfasis en ciertas regiones. Esos son países que están en Centroamérica, el Caribe y los Andes tropical, tropicales. No significa que los otros países que ya fue, que fueron nombrados no, eh, no serían considerados. Sí, son considerados. Solo hemos puesto mayor énfasis en estas regiones. También para aumentar la participación de investigadores que estas regiones han participado menos en convocatorias previas del IAI. Vamos a financiar un, uh, un fondo, un, un, un grant directamente a, al grupo, a la persona, a la institución que se designa como el investigador principal del IAI y hay detalles en el anexo de cómo se designa. Puede ser el, el lead PI, el investigador principal de todo el consorcio o puede ser un PI que es un copy PI dentro del grupo y esa persona sería responsable de los eh, subcontratos dentro de, de, del consorcio que, a, al cual los fondos del IAI se dirigen. También algo muy importante de resaltar es que tenemos eh, la expectativa que los que piden fondos del IAI van a traer algún tipo de cofinanciamiento. 
y en el anexo pueden leer con más eh, detalle a qué se refiere el cofinanciamiento, pero estos son recursos adicionales a, a los fondos que van a pedir del, de IAI que a, van a apoyar el trabajo de la investigación. Pero pueden ser no necesariamente fondos eh, financieros, sino pueden ser otros tipos de contribuciones que se detalle en el anexo. Eso no incluye fondos que van a traer de los otros miembros de, de Belmont Forum para esta específicamente convocatoria. Pueden ser fondos financieros o no financieros, como ya mencioné. Muchísimas gracias y estamos aquí para responder a todas sus preguntas eh, después de que los otros colegas presentan sus anexos. Muchas gracias, Ana. Ahora sigue con nosotros Alexandre Rocato de FAPESPI en Brasil. Adelante, Alexandre. No, thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Ana. Thank you to everyone who participated. Uh, what I can say about, uh, do I have to, Amanda, can you share her annex? I'm not, was not prepared to, to share by myself. Sorry about that. Uh, so, uh, you can share and you can speak in Portuguese. There's Portuguese interpretation. I know you, you're fluent in English, so you should be able to share your screen. Oh, Amanda, great. Okay, thank you, Amanda. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll say in Portuguese. So uh, you hear in Portuguese for the first time, so it's going to be interesting for you guys from, from the Belmont. Muito bem. A FAPESP, antes de mais nada, gostaria de, de lembrar, a FAPESP é, é membro do Belmont Forum desde o início. É ah, importante notar que a FAPESP é uma agência de financiamento de pesquisa do Estado de São Paulo, é uma agência pública de pesquisa. Nós financiamos ah, pesquisadores que são afiliados a instituições dentro do Estado de São Paulo. Então, a, a participação da FAPESP nesta proposta, nesta Ok, ok, let's move on. Ah. Então, a, a pesquisadores de fora do estado de São Paulo podem participar. Podem. Is there something wrong here? I can, it's a... I move on because I can hear the translation to English. That's how it works. Oh, I think you. I think you have your interpretation set in English. If you set your interpretation for Portuguese, you should be good. Oh, Alexander shouldn't set it to anything and then he, the interpreter will hear him. If it's not in any button, I think she should be able to hear him. Okay, so I'll move on in Portuguese. Yeah, and you sound fine on, on our end, Alex. Okay, great. Sorry about that. Not used to it. Okay. No Pesquisadores de outros estados do, do, do Brasil podem participar através do AI ou com participação in kind. Sobre a FAPESP e, a, e os critérios de elegibilidade, existem alguns detalhes sobre elegibilidade que vão ser ainda publicados em detalhe pela FAPESP. Nós ainda não fizemos a divulgação no, na, na web page da FAPESP, porque houve algumas alterações no nosso sistema de submissão, mas em breve, em alguns poucos dias, estará disponibilizado. A FAP... Como critério de elegibilidade, nós é, é, exigimos, ou desejamos que o pesquisador tenha uma experiência no tema da pesquisa proposta, tenha alguma já prévia é, é, participação em projetos internacionais e, sim, e, tem que, e, a, e nós pedimos uma consulta antecipada de elegibilidade para facilitar a participação deste, deste pesquisador no consórcio. A FAPESP oferece, num total de 350 mil euros para, as, para o conjunto de propostas a serem concedidas, cada proposta tem um máximo possível, mas que depende 
da escolha do pesquisador. Caso todas as propostas tenham um valor máximo permitido, isso poderia significar três a quatro propostas no máximo a serem financiadas pela FAPESP. Ah, o processo vai é, ser tramitado na FAPESP na categoria ou é, na formato aproximado de uma Regular Research Award, que é um auxílio, auxiliar, auxílio à pesquisa individual, com as limitações orçamentárias correspondentes. O que se espera aqui é, pela FAPESP, que haja um grande engajamento em participação de, de, de grupos de estudo, incentivar viagens de pesquisadores, alunos, e stakeholders envolvidos no projeto para a criação de redes de pesquisa de alto nível. O que mais eu posso acrescentar? Nós não podemos, nós não financiamos salários de nenhum tipo. Está dentro do contexto de financiamento de pesquisa do Estado de São Paulo. Nós financiamos uh, third parties, uh, serviços de terceiros, mas não diretamente a, a, a participação de stakeholders ou, ou comunidades, não diretamente, mas através de serviços de terceiros. Esperamos que haja engajamento desses atores uh, com uh, recursos próprios. Acho, acho que é isso que eu poderia antecipar e estou disponível para perguntas e respostas ao final da sessão. Muitíssimas graças, Alexander. Recordamos ao público que podem fazer as perguntas em Q&A em qualquer dos três idiomas. Se não contestamos agora, nós vamos a contestar depois por correio eletrônico. Ahora vamos con Lois and Bryce de la Oficina de Asuntos Globales de la Universidad de West Indies. Adelante, Lois. Thank you so much. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I am Lois and Bryce, currently at the Office of Global Affairs at the University of the West Indies. And up until recently, I managed the RDI Fund Secretariat based at the University of the West Indies, St. Augustine Campus. Um, so the RDI fund will be a donor on this call and one second, sorry about that. So in terms of eligibilities, the fund provides funding for researchers who are full-time academic staff at the University of the West Indies based in Trinidad and Tobago. And we, the participation of the fund on this particular call, we strongly encourage Uh, those project leads to act as consortia leads because we would like to see more consortia leads of international research consortia coming from the Caribbean, particularly on a theme as important as this one um, for the future of the Caribbean. In terms of the project team members, they can consist of the UWI staff and students from the UWI um, St. Augustine campus as well as the other campuses. And we also, there should also be participation from international universities and research institutions, as well as local, regional, and international public and private sector institutions, including civil society organizations. So, so a wide gamut of persons can participate on these project teams. The funding, of course, will go directly to the project, the project lead, and the funding will reside at the UE St. Augustine campus. We do ha have provisions for subcontracting, however. Teams are also um, highly encouraged to include PhD students and postdoctoral researchers, as we want to see sustainability in terms of the knowledge generation that's happening within the region. And then we also, as I mentioned, um, in, in terms of the makeup of the teams, 
we encourage transdisciplinary and multidisciplinary research. So we expect to see team members from the social sciences, humanities, economics, as well as from the natural sciences and STEM. And of course, participation of societal partners is highly encouraged as we do uh, favor a stakeholder driven approach. All the eligibility criteria outlined in the RDI Fund's operational guidelines will also, will also pertain as well as, of course, the criteria set out in the general call text of the Belmont Forum. And you can, I, you can obtain the operational guidelines on the RDI Fund's website. In terms of the funding allocation for this particular call, um, the RDI Fund has set aside 32 million, which is approximately US 295,000 or 266,000 euro. And we expect to support two to four grantees with that, with that financial envelope. A maximum request, however, can be up to 2 million. So if a project is particularly competitive, um, that will be considered. But we expect based on these parameters that, um, a project would probably receive approximately $500,000. Project durations are three years. We do have provisions for extensions. And so uh, if, you, if you apply for a duration which is less than three years, then we can, we can consider extensions as they become necessary. You would of course have to apply for that before you can embark upon an extension. As I mentioned previously, subcontracts are permitted and you should be guided by the operational guidelines of the RDI fund. It is notable, however, that full-time staff at UWE are ineligible to receive subcontracts. Uh, in terms of um, requirements, the proposals that, we, uh, that are submitted to the Belmont Forum should also be submitted to the RDI fund secretariat via our email address, which is shown here, rdifund at sda.ue.edu. And it should be noted that successful teams will have to put in place a research collaboration agreement amongst the participating researchers um, prior to embarking on implementation of their projects. So if you need more information, feel free to contact our national contact, which is Mrs. Cheryl dubé Tuari, who is the senior manager at the St. Augustine Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship at the UE St. Augustine campus. Our email address is the RDI fund at sta.ue.edu. And feel free to visit our website at sta.ue.edu slash RDI fund for more information. Thank you. Muchísimas gracias, Lois. Eh, ahora seguimos con Erika aquí de Future Earth. Gracias, Erika. Eh, ¿Vas a compartir tu pantalla? Perfecto. Many thanks. Uh, the Future Earth Annex is a complement to all of the other annexes that are described today. So the country list uh, that uh, eligible proposers can submit from is quite long. It includes many of the Caribbean islands, as well as countries in Central America. Please do take uh, some time to review the list. Uh, to ensure your uh, eligibility. The, fo the focus of the Future Earth uh, investment is in the breadth of knowledge needed to address migration and mobility. So we do not specify natural sciences or social sciences or some specific knowledge set. It just needs to be applicable to the questions outlined in the call. We are offering 250,000 US dollars that has a maximum request per country within one project of 25,000 US dollars. And that includes indirect costs of up to a 10% rate. The $25,000 per country in a project is divided so that 20,000 of that amount can be applied towards researchers and uh, knowledge holders in an academic space. A $5,000 additional amount is applied to the participation by stakeholders in the project. 
recognizing it's important to remunerate them for their time spent in a transdisciplinary activity. In a single project, there can be two uh, eligible uh, asks from future Earth. For example, if you have a, a team that includes participants from Dominica and Suriname, those are the two that can apply for a maximum of 50,000 US dollars for that project. As per the guidelines that were shared before, that would be uh, two participants from one funder. So you would need to find participants from two of the other funders, uh, either in this call, or uh, if you look at the website, you will see the full list of funders participating in the migration call. Our emphasis in this uh, activity is on inclusivity and generating uh, accessible products. So we will be looking uh, with special attention at the data and data management uh, application in the project description, as well as the communications plan, ensuring that the projects are producing more than just journal articles, but also communications products that are accessible to the stakeholders involved, including looking for products that are in the language of the stakeholders involved. I, I'm sure you may have many more questions about our annex, and I am putting into the chat my email address, which is also at the bottom of our annex. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. Muchísimas gracias, Erika, sobre todo por aceptar preguntas en todos los idiomas principales de nuestra región. Y ahora vamos a terminar la parte de presentaciones antes de pasar a preguntas y respuestas con Pablo Varela de GDN. Adelante, Pablo. Gracias. Thank you very much, Irene. Um, un saludo a todas y a todos. Eh, yo soy Pablo Varela. Eh, los estoy eh, acompañando desde Finlandia, soy parte de Global Development Network y pues bueno, me gustaría compartir con ustedes algunas de las actividades que estamos organizando. Uh, no sé si estén viendo ya la presentación. Permítanme regresarme. Ok, bueno. Pues básicamente... Eh, tenemos cuatro tipos de actividades las que estamos organizando para todos los interesados en aplicar a, eh, a esta llamada, por así decirlo. Eh, la primera es actividades eh, de networking, que son básicamente espacios en donde nos ofrecemos a los participantes la oportunidad de conocer a otros aplicantes eh, para que intercambien ideas, intercambien experiencias, intereses eh, y tiene como objetivo sobre todo pues que puedan identificar a otros colaboradores que también están aplicando para esta, para esta llamada y puedan eh, pues formar consorcios de investigación. Hasta ahorita hemos tenido ya tres de estas actividades, eh, se, han, eh, bueno, se han unido personas ya de, de diferentes países y han empezado a intercambiar eh, información relevante. La siguiente de estas sesiones es el día de mañana a las 3 de la tarde en horario eh, central, hor hora París, eh, por así decirlo. Y pues eh, es una muy buena experiencia que eh, pudiera resultar muy útil para muchos y muchas de ustedes. Otra actividad que tenemos es enfocada en los aspectos metodológicos, sobre todo en el proceso de preparación de los proyectos de investigación. Eh, en estos que llamamos Methodology Deep Dives, eh, invitamos a eh, expertos en, en temas de migración, eh, sobre todo que han trabajado o que están trabajando en eh, 
proyectos transdisciplinarios y proyectos eh, en diferentes países. En, en estas sesiones, los expertos bueno, presentan parte de su trabajo eh, y después eh, pasamos a una sesión de preguntas y respuestas. Eh, hemos tenido una sesión hasta ahora eh, y tenemos varias más programadas. Eh, es, eh, por ejemplo, eh, la, la, la siguiente es el, es el lunes 16, eh, igual a las 3 de la tarde hora París. Tenemos eh, como presentadora a Evelina Mandula. Ella, eh, pues, nos acompaña desde eh, la Universidad de Bern de Ciencias eh, Aplicadas y, eh, pues, Básicamente habla de los temas de investigación en los que está trabajando y se enfoca en los temas metodológicos. Son sesiones pues, que tienen como objetivo principal eh, ayudar a, a las personas que están preparando sus, eh, sus proyectos, eh, pues intercambiar ideas eh, en, en estos eh, retos eh, metodológicos. Y sobre todo escuchar las experiencias de otros investigadores similares, eh, pues para que puedan... Eh, fortalecer eh, estos aspectos tan importantes eh, al momento de, eh, pues de, de, de aplicar eh, eh, para esta llamada. Eh, son los miércoles, básicamente, después de, de, de este lunes, eh, sería el miércoles eh, y después otros dos miércoles más. Entonces, eh, ¿Cómo unirse a estas sesiones? Bueno, pues desde el eh, Migration Hub o la plataforma que estamos utilizando para conectarnos, ahí se encuentran eh, los links de Zoom donde se pueden registrar a estas sesiones. Y también eh, a través de correo electrónico eh, les vamos a hacer llegar eh, todas las esta, bueno, toda la información de estas sesiones donde ustedes se pueden registrar y pueden acompañarnos. Eh, otro tipo de sesiones eh, están enfocadas a los retos que tiene la colaboración eh, en estos proyectos transdisciplinarios y de diferentes países, donde también eh, invitamos a diferentes expertos que están trabajando o han trabajado en temas eh, de migración, eh, pues para que puedan intercambiar ideas con las personas que están eh, 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 preparando eh, sus proyectos de investigación. Tenemos también una gran variedad de, 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 de personas de, eh, 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 con experiencia diferente. Eh, el, la, la próxima sesión es el 19 de mayo, donde invitamos a Peter Wanga y que, de hecho, él es... Eh, actualmente un, eh, lo que se le llama Consortium Lead eh, de un proyecto también eh, que forma parte de Belmont Forum eh, donde pues el, el objetivo es que intercambie ideas de cuáles han sido sus experiencias como líder de, de este consorcio eh, sobre todo para las personas que están en el proceso de, de, de la conformación de estos consorcios de investigación y pues bueno puede ser sumamente interesante y enriquecedor eh, tenemos también cinco sesiones eh, preparadas y pues igual la, 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 las fechas y los links para registrarse eh, los pueden encontrar en el eh, Migration Hub. Y finalmente eh, tenemos también eh, lo que se llaman Elevator Pitch Feedback Sessions. Estas son sesiones en donde... Eh, pues eh, aquellos interesados en recibir en retroalimentación a los proyectos que están preparando para presentarlos eh, pues las sesiones eh, funcionan eh, a manera de que eh, un, un equipo de, de, de investigadores presenta su proyecto y reciben retroalimentación por parte de expertos que han trabajado en, en temas similares y en proyectos similares ¿no? Enfocándose sobre todo en la, en la pregunta de investigación, en, el método, en, 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 el, en la metodología, en, en la en relevancia en, ter, en términos de políticas públicas. Y bueno, pues eh, es también un espacio importante para que eh, las personas puedan eh, compartir estas ideas, inquietudes, retos que los ayuden a preparar unas eh, sesiones más, eh, unas... Eh, eh, aplicaciones más, eh, digamos, más, más robustas 
en estos temas. Eh, pues, estas son, eh, son las actividades que eh, Global Development Network eh, eh, organiza y en los que esperamos, pues, eh, ahora sí que eh, recibir a, a todos los investigadores, investigadoras eh, interesados. Y pues, eh, les recuerdo que eh, pueden registrarse eh, con los links que se encuentran en el, en el Migration Hub. Y bueno, si tienen alguna pregunta, eh, aquí estoy a sus órdenes eh, en, en el chat y pues también en el correo de, eh, de, de Belmont Forum que, que, que está accesible para todos. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you so much, everyone. Muchísimas gracias, Pablo. Eh, queremos, antes de eh, abordar algunas de las preguntas, hay muchísimas preguntas, como avisé anteriormente, algunas serán contestadas en seguimiento a esta reunión y hay otras que podremos abordar el día de hoy mientras tengamos tiempo. Hay una pregunta importante aquí eh, para Nicole Arbor. Necesitamos que ella explique un poco más sobre el proceso de aplicación. Hay algunas preguntas, por ejemplo, eh, ¿qué pasa si en una eh, agencia de financiamiento me dicen que no, pero en las otras dos les dicen que sí a mis coinvestigadores, por ejemplo? Eh, eh, algunas de si el, el, los investigadores pueden eh, postularse eh, individualmente, una serie de preguntas. Ajá. Sí. Bien. Entonces, adelante, Nicole. Ok, so I'll start with the first one. Um, and that was, uh, what happens if? And so, the, I, I, I'm also going to remind Amanda and Erica, who both have lots of historical knowledge here, that if I say something wrong, please, please it would be the right time to kick me. Um, but uh, my understanding of the, the way the process works, this is the first time I will be going through the full process as the executive director, uh, is that uh, it wouldn't come out of the process as an approved project if all the funders have not Agreed. So this the process is it's one common process. Everything goes into the BF grants operating system. Um, I know that there's some other questions that, that showed up in the questions box that said, do we have to send submit submit different applications to different funders? Yes, sometimes, but most of all, most like, but there has to be that primary um, that primary funding request that comes in through the, the Belmont Forum Grants Operating System, and that this is the one that goes through the common agreed upon review process by the panel of experts. Our panel of experts will review and will rank the, pro the, the proposals that have gone through the process. And then those that are agreed to, that, that, that fit the, the top criteria, the ones that are the best, um, will then be selected for funding. And then our funders all come together And we basically allocate money depending on how much resources exist. So it's not like one funder rejects a project. Um, it goes through different systems, largely for administrative purposes, so that the, the different organizations have everything put in through their system. And I mean, Alexander can speak to specifically perhaps the requirements of FEPESP, because I know that FEPESP does this uh, their way. Uh, they, like they, there is a, a requirement to run it through the FEPESP system as well. Um, but uh, Overall, the, if you follow the procedure that is outlined in each annex for each funder, and you put your, pro your proposal in through the Belmont Forum BF Go operating system, and I'll drop a link in in case you want to find it um, shortly after I finish answering the question, um, you're still going through one common review process. So it's, it's, it should, if they're successful, then they are successful with all the funders. If that makes sense. And Amanda and, and uh, Erica, I don't know if you have anything to add. Erica looks like she has stuff to add. Listo. Después de Erica, gracias. Vamos a también pasar al IAI porque esperamos que haya preguntas específicas sobre el IAI. Adelante, Erica. Sure. Um, so just to add to Nicole's answer, We recognize how complex this is. Each funder has different guidelines and we're asking you to thread all of this together into one eligible project. So what will happen after the proposals are received is all of the funders together will check for compliance relevant to their annex. And if there are problems uh, in the past, and I, I would ask the, 
the thematic program office to um, confirm this, but uh, what the funders do is make a list of what is not compliant. And we get back to uh, those teams and say, you need to fix these items. And you have this much time to fix those so that they can remain in the competition. And so there's an opportunity to have some feedback from the funders after the proposal deadline. Um, we do try to keep as many in the competition as possible. We're not trying to be difficult, um, but there are strings that come with all of the monies that are made available in these competitions. So I, I believe that's the process for this migration call. Um, so there will be a compliance check and um, a correction stage if needed. Gracias, Erika. Eh, tenemos algunas preguntas para el IAI. Una que me parece importante es, es, es eh, eh, los eh, postulantes tienen que encajar la, en una visión predeterminada que el IAI pueda tener sobre cómo se debe abordar la migración y la movilidad en relación con cambio climático. Gracias, Irene. La respuesta es no. Esto depende de ustedes que son los expertos, los científicos, en plantear la problemática en base de una evidencia ¿no? y, y, y armar eh, una propuesta de investigación. Nosotros del IAI no tenemos respuestas o una visión predeterminada. Más bien, sugiero que revisen la convocatoria general que podemos poner en el chat, donde ahí pueden ver las líneas de financiamiento en las temáticas generales, eh, pero no es que hay una, una línea preestablecida. Nosotros del IAI trabajamos para fomentar la creación de información científica relacionada con cambio global, para mejorar la habilidad de los países de la región para poder a crear políticas o intervenciones para adaptar o reducir el impacto o mitigar estos impactos del cambio global. Pero ese es algo muy amplio. Y si tienen más preguntas también, pues, sugiero que revisen la agenda científica del IAI que vamos a poner también en el chat. Muchas gracias, Irene. Una pregunta para cualquiera de ustedes, pero también para el IAI. Eh, ¿Hay eh, detalles específicos de salud humana que se permiten en la propuesta o es una, un, se permite eh, a decisión de los investigadores? No sé si esto depende de las agencias o depende de la las pregunta, de Irene, ¿Mm? Irene, ¿para quién era la pregunta? En esa pregunta es, es abierta, ¿no? ¿Hay algún límite sobre el enfoque en salud que se pueda abordar en esta convocatoria? No sé si Belmont o, o del mismo IAI. No, yo creo que Nicole y Amanda pueden comentar sobre sí, eso. Entonces, Nicole o Amanda, sí, de la, según los lineamientos del Belmont Forum. Amanda, Nicole. Can you repeat the question just one more time? Sorry. Um, sobre, a ver, voy a leer exactamente cómo dice la pregunta. ¿Dónde está? Okay, now I lost it. Pero <laughs> es si hay un límite o un enfoque específico sobre salud que se que se deba abordar o está abierto si se puede abordar salud en cualquier de cualquier manera. health, the topic of health. <clears throat> okay, so that can certainly be included. It, it, this is, um, I would say that the areas and the theme, they're, they're broad, first of all. We're looking for integrated approaches. Health is certainly an important aspect, you know, when it comes to um, migration and mobility. So I think the more important part, the more important piece is a, a thoughtful community driven project that has societal relevance and, um, and that is compelling. And so I'll, I'll give an example here. Um, the pathways to sustainability call um, that we uh, funded last year. 
for that call, we had them focused on the sustainable development goals. We had the widest range of projects you can imagine, of themes and focus, and it just came down to which were the, the great ideas, the really thought out projects with impactful research. So health can certainly be a part of that. Hope that answers their question. Eh, gracias, Amanda. Hay algunas preguntas en el QIA del Zoom que están siendo contestadas en el idioma original. Nosotros vamos a descargar estas preguntas y vamos a contestarlas, eh, vamos a traducirlas para contestarlas por correo electrónico. Eh, ahí pueden ver algunos de los enlaces de los anexos que ustedes han estado pidiendo también en, el, en la sección de preguntas y respuestas. Por favor, fíjense en esa sección todos los enlaces que han sido compartidos de los anexos de las diferentes agencias eh, de financiamiento. Otra pregunta importante es sobre los investigadores independientes. ¿Deben estar o no afiliados a una institución? Y también si pueden pertenecer a la sociedad civil. No sé si Amanda o Nicole eh, quisieran contestar esa pregunta. I can try first and then Amanda, if you want to catch up after. Um, so I think the short answer is it depends on the funder and the annex. Uh, and so the, some funders can fund people that are outside of specifically academic institutions. Some funders require you to be on a very specific list of higher education institutions. And so it's really, you really do have to go and carefully um, look at the annex for the funding that you think you are eligible for, and it should be spelled out there. And I, I think that's, you know, part of, part of the reason we have these kinds of, of meetings is to be able to help pull apart some of that in a public space to make it easier, because I recognize that the annexes can be a little painful to read sometimes. Um, and so I, uh, yes, yeah, so, so I, I invite you to consult the annexes very closely and also ask any questions that you might have to the contact person. There should be a contact person mentioned at the bottom of each of the annexes. So if you have any doubts, you ask that individual if you are eligible to receive the funding and they should be able to respond from their institution. Thanks, Nicole. I can jump in from II's perspective and you can see this in the annex that we uh, only will fund awards to institutional accounts. So we wouldn't fund an award to uh, an individual who's not affiliated with an institution. That said, we also um, do not typically fund salaries, but if you had a co-PI who, for example, wanted to contract an individual as a consultant on the team to do a specific piece of work, that's always an option because subawards are allowed uh, by our, our organization. And we can provide um, awards to PIs or co-PIs at a, a range of different types of institutions which are listed in our annex. Gracias, Ana. Otra pregunta que hay eh, ahora que todavía no hemos contestado en la sección de preguntas. ¿Estos fondos se pueden usar, por ejemplo, para organizar una conferencia, para invitar a profesores, estudiantes y miembros del gobierno? ¿O, por ejemplo, para publicar un libro? Um. It, I'll take this one uh, just because you sparked my interest when you said conference, which is if you look at Erica Key's background, SRI, that's the Sustainability Research and Innovation Congress. This is a, a gathering, a global gathering of researchers, stakeholders, and policymakers around sustainability. And so this is in, um, oh goodness, it's next month, it's in June. Um, but this is, the Belmont Forum and Future Earth's main way of coming together yearly. And so we high, first of all, our, you'll read in the call for proposals, it does say that um, participants in this collaborative research action will need to attend the Sustainability Research and Innovation Congress. And so um, if you wanted to work with us to develop content for the Congress, that's the place to do it. Certainly writing books, um, those are, that, that's encouraged, you know, various different ways of communication, getting out your information are encouraged. 
Gracias, Amanda. Tenemos otra pregunta también para el IAI. Es una pregunta doble. Una es cómo, se, cómo pueden participar las ONGs. Y a esto añado una pregunta propia para conocimiento de la audiencia. ¿Pueden participar, por ejemplo, de otras disciplinas como las humanidades y en otros campos del conocimiento que no sea lo que tradicionalmente conocemos como estrictamente científico? Ana. Perdón, Irene, estuve respondiendo a una pregunta ahorita. Eh, I can, primero voy a responder a la pregunta que está en el chat y compartir con el grupo para que escuchen. Eh, Ari, Areli me está preguntando cómo pueden participar eh, personas de la sociedad civil. Y repito otra vez que podrían participar, eh, por ejemplo, siendo contratado directamente como subcontrato de un copy o un PI. Y es, en nuestro anexo específicamente hemos indicado que los fondos pueden ser utilizados para fomentar la participación de personas de la sociedad civil o otros eh, actores, lo que llamamos stakeholders. Entonces, sí, queremos que los fondos sean utilizados para apoyar la, la participación de estos actores que son fundamentales para un trabajo interdisciplinar. Irene, ¿podrías repetir la otra pregunta ahora? Segunda Perdón. parte, en parte está relacionado porque estamos hablando de otros campos de trabajo, del conocimiento. El IAI va a incluir también eh, profesionales de las humanidades sí. y va a considerar otro tipo de abordajes y ámbitos del conocimiento. Eh, ¿Nos puedes explicar un poco? Sí, bueno, también de hecho esto está muy alineado con nuestro enfoque en equidad, diversidad e inclusión y la importancia de poder incorporar diferentes formas de conocimiento eh, dentro de estos grupos transdisciplinares para buscar eh, soluciones a los retos eh, que en este caso Latinoamérica y el Caribe están tratando de, de, de encontrar. Entonces, en nuestro caso, digamos, pueden leer la, la línea el lineamiento general de la convocatoria, pero hemos especificado en nuestro anexo que los grupos deben incluir eh, alguien de, de diver, personas de diversos campos académicos, como las ciencias naturales, ciencias sociales y también humanidades, con los actores sociales o tomadores de decisión o miembros de las comunidades, las personas. Yo llamo a esas personas expertos en sus propias realidades, porque tenemos... No solamente los académicos son expertos, los que son fuera de académicos, fuera de la academia, pero que son expertos y requerimos esa expertise para justamente encontrar estas soluciones a través de esta eh, nueva forma de hacer la ciencia. Entonces, sí, bienvenidos a estas diversas perspectivas a los grupos. Gracias, Ana. Hay una pregunta sobre la geografía. Esta pregunta ha sido dirigida a Alexandre de Fapespi, pero es para el grupo. ¿Cómo van a manejar la ubicación geográfica de los investigadores y sus afiliaciones? Hay muchas preguntas al respecto. ¿Dónde debo estar basado? ¿Puedo estar basado fuera de Sao Paulo, pero tengo que estar en una institución de Sao Paulo? ¿O puede ser al revés? ¿Estoy en Sao Paulo, pero puedo trabajar con una institución fuera de Sao Paulo, por ejemplo? En el caso del IAI, eh, y también que Belmont Forum explique, y también la Universidad de West Indies, ¿no? ¿Cómo van a, a, a manejar? Sabemos que la información está en los anexos, pero si ¿sí pueden darles algunas sugerencias a nuestros participantes. No sé quién quiere empezar, puede alzar la mano. Al, Alexa, al, adelante, Alexa. Ok, I can start. Oh, stop English. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's the first the important thing, it's easy. The proponent to FAPESP, which is the main uh, 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 let's say a, a fellow researcher in the consortium, the, the, the partner researcher in the consortium that is asking money for FAPES. This guy, this one guy that receives the fund from FAPES, he has to be affiliated and work in an institution in the state of Sao Paulo. It's just that. He can have co workers or a partner researchers or uh, whatever in his uh, research team. That can be from anywhere, but the, 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 the money from the past goes to this researcher to be spent in, uh, 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 in the host institution in Sao Paulo. Of course, this can go everywhere in the world, uh, uh, but the guy has to be affiliated to the, this institution. It's as simple as that. Gracias, Alexandra. Luis, eh, yes. adelante, gracias. Okay. 
similarly, uh, so the limitation here is that the, the, the grantee, so essentially the, the researcher that's receiving the grant has to be a full-time academic staff member at UB St. Augustine, but the team members can be from anywhere in the world. They could be anywhere in the region. They can be from other UWI um, campuses, yeah? So I hope that helps. And also at, at UE St. Augustine, we have researchers from all over the world. So it's not where you're necessarily from in terms of your, your nationality, but where your, your connection to the institution, yeah? No sé si eh, Erika de Future Earth, porque Erika, eh, bueno, Future Earth va a también dar fondos en ciertos países de la región. Tal vez si tú nos puedes explicar. Sure. The Future Earth funding is not only for countries in this region, but also in Southeast Asia and Pacific Island nations. So there's an opportunity for you to collaborate beyond the bounds of the region if you so choose. This is a very exciting opportunity for Belmont Forum because of all of these funders who are investing in Latin America and the Caribbean and the opportunity to have three funders and three countries within the region to be able to collaborate. So I think this may be the first time we have had that kind of coverage and the reason for the focus today Um, but I've just put in the chat, there are other funders investing in this call that are not here today, including um, our colleagues from NSF in the US, but uh, also there's funding from CEDA for African countries in Europe as well. So um, we encourage you to look at the call at the table with all of the annexes And um, if you are interested in the future Earth support, um, which is uh, a number of countries, sort of a mix, so please do read closely. Um, but uh, we would be happy to uh, take any questions you have about our funding. Um, we cover many Caribbean island nations and uh, uh, some in Central America, some in South America, um, but our interest is in uh, very good projects that are really approaching the migration and mobility consideration in a creative way. And we look forward to uh, your contributions. Gracias, Erika. No sé, Ana, ¿quieres añadir algo? Uh, sí, solo para resaltar en el chat pueden ver los otros países, incluye Austria, Francia, Noruega, Sudáfrica, Suecia, eh, Turquía, Estados Unidos y SIDA tiene un montón de países, especialmente en, en África. Entonces realmente la idea es que esto sea un consorcio global. Hemos juntado este grupo de financiadores para, para dar información a, a, para los que buscan financiamiento específicamente para Latinoamérica y el Caribe, pero justamente para poder competir tiene que haber un consorcio de tres financiadores y puede ser de cualquier región del mundo, ¿no? Y desde el IAI, nosotros consideramos, eh, eh, la, eh, digamos, la ubicación de la institución que es como el anfitrión del PI o co como la forma de designar eh, el país. No, no es en base de la nacionalidad o la residencia del investigador, sino es en base de dónde está ubicada la institución al cual ese investigador o investigador está afiliado, porque esa es la institución que recibirá los fondos directamente del IAI. Gracias, Ana. Ahora, una pregunta también para el grupo, y con esto creo que podemos cerrar la sesión de hoy, es cómo estos investigadores, aparte de los hubs de migración del Foro Belmont, que tienen eventos ya en el calendario de sesiones, de encuentros, de capacitación también, ¿Cómo pueden los investigadores de esta región contactarse, así como Erika ha dicho, en Future Earth, que pueden comunicarse con ellos para tener apoyo? Pero, por ejemplo, eh, en el estado de Sao Paulo o en la Universidad de West Indies, ¿qué pueden hacer nuestros investigadores para conectarse, para encontrar eh, pares en otros países? Lois, ¿quieres tú empezar? Sure. Thanks, Irene. 
So thank you so much for that question because I wanted to reiterate Erica's excitement about you know, the uniqueness of this particular opportunity at this time. To be able to have this level of coverage in Latin America and the Caribbean, I think is quite exciting. And so please feel free to reach out. I will repost the links uh, in the chat. Please feel free to reach out to the RDI fund via the, its email address. If you don't already have connections with, with, with researchers within the Caribbean, or at the UWI, feel free to reach out to us and we can make those connections institutionally at the UWI. And we also encourage you to, to um, promote these opportunities in your networks. So if there, there are researchers in the Caribbean or at the UWI who are not currently on this call, please feel free to reach out to them because they will be your avenue to accessing funding, yeah? Muchas gracias, Lloyd. This is the respuesta que estábamos esperando. Alexander, no sé, in Sao Paulo, uh, well, uh, SP, uh, our community uh, is huge, and we don't have the manpower to to help out uh, these researchers in a case by case basis. But of course, we're able to answer questions. So we rely on the on the hub, and FAPESP has a, a tool uh, available on our portal to uh, find researchers in São Paulo that works with whatever uh, a theme. So you can search and find and communicate with uh, researchers within the, the state of Sao Paulo. So that, that would help a lot. Gracias, Alexander. Le he pedido que nos comparta eh, la herramienta de búsqueda en el chat para poder compartir con ustedes y que puedan utilizar esto. Eh, no sé, Nicole, Amanda o también Ana del IAI que nos va a explicar cómo los investigadores de nuestra región pueden seguir conectados y pueden recibir apoyo del IAI o del Belmont Forum. Ana. Bueno, de nuestro lado, del IAI, están bienvenidos de comunicarse directamente con nosotros. Irene va a poner otra vez un email en el chat. Y para seguir con el tema de networking, eh, sugerimos también que se ingresan al hub que mencionaron hoy. Pero si nos escriben directamente y podemos apoyar, estamos felices de poder apoyarles eh, en es, de esa forma. También quiero mencionar que el IAI va a abrir dos sesiones de lo que llamamos uh, horas, como puerta, horas de la puerta abierta, ¿no? Como las office hours, lo decimos en inglés. Entonces, en las próximas dos semanas eh, vamos a tener estos office hours y va a ser un espacio para conectarse, seguir revisando preguntas, tal vez pueden ir revisando los anexos o hablando con sus colegas mientras tanto y va a ser otra oportunidad de, de juntarse con, con nosotros eh, para poder... Eh, hacer seguimiento, ¿no? Eso creo que va a ser más puntual. Y en el seguimiento de esta reunión vamos a compartir la grabación, las presentaciones y también los links de Zoom para esas siguientes oportunidades de esos office hours que he mencionado. Tengo una última pregunta, esta para Nicole Arbor o Amanda Shores del Vermont Forum, sobre el tipo de investigaciones eh, que se esperan eh, tienen, ¿Qué vinculación tienen con las políticas públicas? ¿Cuál es la, la importancia de los resultados para la política pública? Y esto creo que es importante, está en la descripción de la, de la convocatoria, pero a veces como científicos duros nos podemos olvidar de esto. Just quickly, I wanted to say that I put in the chat just now a document. It's the the um, newsletter that I just actually it'll be sent out in 30 minutes and it has all of the videos from the annex workshop broken down by funding agencies. So that's great. You could just quickly hit the link and then find the information you need there. And I'm going to put it in the chat one more time. Um, it also has all of the upcoming networking um, uh, and workshop opportunities that Global Development Network are hosting. So um, there's, I think there's maybe 15 or more upcoming sessions there, and we want to encourage you to attend those. Those are going to be great ways to network and to find other interested researchers who have similar interests and you can work together with them. I want to point out to you that 
I'm, my assumption is most of you who are here have filled out the expression of interest. Filling out the, ex so, but if not, filling out the expression of interest is how you get access to the migration hub. So you would have to fill that out. It's on the Belmont Forum website. Um, and then we add everyone to the hub once a week. So um, if, if that needs to happen for you, make sure that you um, reach out. So our, oh, if you have questions for oh, general Belmont form requirements, I can answer those for you. And that is at migrations at belmontforum.org. I'm going to put that in the chat real quick. And then, Nicole, why don't you take that um, interesting policy question? Uh, these are my favorite questions, because, of course, this is where I would like to see the rubber hit the road, frankly. Um, and so, so what I would say is that uh, this is a very difficult and challenging question, but with wonderful partners like those that you see with us here, uh, we are able to reach more and better audiences and influence policy. So II has done some amazing outreach work working with their, um, their members and their contact points. Uh, from the Belmont Forum perspective in migration, we are preparing some experiments uh, that will look at how we can create some outputs, bringing together all of the researchers from the migration community. So once the projects are accepted, we try to build a community out of the various projects so that you're not only a project in isolation, but we bring you together to, to have these discussions as a group of funded projects. And what we're also looking at is what kinds of outputs we can create in that space. So the, the coordination committee that is coming together is really thinking about what this might look like. But certainly what I would also strongly encourage is that as you develop your proposals and as you develop your communications plans specifically, that you think about those kinds of outputs and how you want to engage with those policymakers and those policy landscapes, because that will also influence the review process. There are a panel of experts is looking at all of these kinds of discussions. I would also encourage you and uh, uh, to, to think about your um, your data management plan and, and making sure that you have access to open or that you are thinking about where you are going to um, put the put that data that you create and that is open and it, it's accessible long term for other researchers to use. Um, bring the policymakers into your consortium. This is these are transdisciplinary consortiums. If you are working on a problem that is relevant to them, bring them in. It will be lovely. And as Anna pointed out, also uh, EDI equity, diversity, and inclusion plans are also really uh, fantastic things to include. And IEI requires them. Not all of our funders do, but we would love to see them universally applied. Um, so there's there's lots of ways that we can influence the, these types of discussions. And we also try to think of ways that we can help offer training to allow our researchers and our research community to engage in that. And then very finally, second plug for SRI is that the Sustainability Research and Innovation Congress is really aimed at bringing these people together. So we're looking at not creating a conference that is just scientists talking to scientists, because of course we all love to talk to each other about the things that we love best, but also bringing in those policymakers, also bringing in those community stakeholders and creating those conversations. And so within that context, uh, we're working with IAI this year to do two, to, uh, two transdisciplinary trainings, to do a science to policy training, um, all of which will be offered uh, with direct translation. We still have to figure that out, but we're going in that direction. So I think there's, there's lots of opportunities for us to build these skill sets together. Um, and uh, so I'm also open to other thoughts and ideas. So if the community has other ideas or other initiatives that they would like to see taken forward, by all means, I love crazy ideas. Send them in my direction. I'll even put my email in the chat and you can send all the crazy ideas. Muchas gracias, Nicole. Nicole Arbor the Belmont Forum, Amanda Shores. Erika aquí de Future Earth, Lois St. Bryce de la Universidad de West Indies, Pablo Varela de GDN y Alexander Rocato de FAPESPI. Queremos agradecerles nuevamente a ustedes y a nuestros participantes del día de hoy. Haremos un seguimiento con todos quienes se registraron para compartir los vínculos. Les agradecemos muchísimo y haremos seguimiento y esperamos vernos pronto. Es un gusto. Adiós.
Gracias. Gracias. Obrigado. Thank you. Gracias Chao. a todos. Bye -bye Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Bye bye. <laughs>